specific okay in this video we are going to talk about some tips and tricks for using this little guy in a small group setting so I'm talking specifically about groups where there's no adult so think about when you're having center time and you have kids in the dramatic play, in the block area, the water table, maybe at a writing center, at different centers, I like to bring in a bebop center. Now, I don't usually do this until my kids have gone through a couple of big group um, lessons because I want them to truly, fully understand what all buttons mean and how to use it. If you put a bee bot and a mat into a small center and let them go, it is going to be a free for all. First of all, number one, they're gonna fight and argue over whose turn it is. Number two, they're gonna like pull it back and forth. They're gonna forget to clear. It's, it goes sideways so fast. So just like with almost any center you have, a little bit of planning can make a big difference in the success of your small group with bee bots. And it can be done, and it can be done really, really well. So here are my tips after literally years in the field trying it out. So number one, my you have to kind of identify what your goal is. What is it that you want your kids to be doing at that center? Do you want them to just kind of explore it? Do you want them to be learning something? When I first start out with small groups, my goal is really for them to build confidence. I want them to feel like they truly understand what each of the buttons does and how they can predict where the Bebop will end up. That's my first goal. Later on, it might be building vocabulary. It might be retelling a story. It might be identifying the parts of a life cycle. Those come later, but at the very beginning, when you're first starting to have a small group center with your B-Bots, this is what I suggest you do. Number one, two kids. Only two kids per B-Bot. You start getting into three or four, oh, don't do four, they start to lose track of whose turn it is. But if there's only two kids and it's my turn, the other kid knows it's their turn next. There is no confusion of, no, I'm after him. It's, it's much better just two students. So I always just let two kids go to a mat. And at the beginning, when I start doing centers, I only use one B-Bot, two kids, that's it. As we progress and the kids are getting really much more confident and more mature as the year goes by, I might have three or four Bebop um, centers. So I'll have two here, two there, two all over the place, and the mats are all over the place. And you can do that if you have multiple mats, I mean, multiple Bebots, I have like 12 Bebots, and um, multiple mats. But start with one mat, start with two kids. What I do is I want to give them a task. I know teachers, we're just all control freaks, right? And I, this is where it comes in. So when you look at NACI, and we all know NACI is the gold standard for early childhood, kindergarten, first grade, they really recommend that every single center that you have has a piece of paper and a pencil so the kids can write down what they're doing. So I kind of took that idea and brought it to the Bebots, and I made this little um, sheet and so it's basically solved the mystery and this is a detective theme and I have different levels of Bebop programs some it's just three four five you can see at the beginning every single one is clear right we want them to clear so the first direction is clear then I want them to follow the directions and in this space, I want them to write down where the Bebot landed. Now, I don't care if it lands in the right place. I don't mind if they mess it up. This is about exploration, and there's no real assessment here of whether they're getting it correct. I want them to start to see that this program leads to a place. 
and this one is different and it's going to lead somewhere else and so on and so forth so each child at the center gets the same sheet and they get their be bought and they just get started. So Jaden goes first, clear, straight, straight, straight. Where did you end up? Draw a picture. Now this one is really good if you have something super simple like colors or um, animals, something that's easy for them to draw. If your kids are really high level, they can actually write the word here, but um, if your kids can do that, they're better than mine because my kids could never do that. But you can, Follow the program and then draw a picture of a pig. Follow the program, draw a picture of a dog. And again, I don't care if it's identifiable. I don't care if their pig looks like a pig. I just want to see them following the program. Now for kids who are really just beginning, you can literally say, here's the bee bot. What's the first one? Clear, clear it, color that one in. What's the next one? Straight, color it in straight color it in straight color it in it's like how we do it with the programming cards so then they get that press go and they're off put your answer so i have this detective one i also have a pirate one they're exactly the same but if you have kids that are super competitive you can give one the pirate and one the detective so they think they have something different so they don't get stressed out if Jaden ends up on blue and I end up on yellow. They, they don't realize that they're the exact same. Um, so that is one of the ways that I have my kids use the Bebot by themselves. And they can use it by themselves if you give them a little bit of direction. So just give them this on a clipboard with a pencil, with a bebot, and let them go. So our goal is to encourage independence, right? We want them to feel ownership over their bebot and their learning. We definitely want that. Number two, I want them to develop the ability to see that different algorithms, literally see different algorithms get you to different end results. That when you change off the um, each individual piece, the Bebop will end up somewhere else. That I want them to know. So my tips for small group. Number one, two kids. If you have really great kids or you have an adult, then maybe you could move up. But I'm telling you, even with an adult present, two kids are better because they know their turn is next. It's so much easier. Give them one mat. Give them a sheet with a pencil and a clipboard. And what they need to do is follow the algorithm, program the robot, write down where it goes give it to the next child and they do the exact same thing because when you have two kids especially when it comes to be bots one will write this elaborate program that is 47,000 pieces long and the other child starts to get really really aggravated so the longest one here is one two three five so it's it's letting them explore but in the confines of a very controlled environment. And by doing that, you can allow them to have individual centers by themselves. And as you um, become more confident and as they become more confident, then start putting out multiple mats, multiple bebots, much, multiple teams of kids. And it's honestly, there is nothing better in my eyes than to walk into a classroom and see five bebot mats spread out on the floor, maybe in the hallway, and 10 kids like programming and coloring and writing. It is ah, a joy to behold. So give small groups a try, but don't try until you have at least done the large group a few times. All right, good luck.